Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Charger Bulletin News. I'm Kaylee Feschler. And I'm Nicole Rivera. Here are this week's top stories. December is AIDS Awareness Month and it's important for students to know the risk and resources available to them. According to the Center for Disease Control, in 2017, over 8,000 people between the ages of 13 and 24 were diagnosed with HIV. That means college students are at higher risk of contracting the disease. But preventative measures are available. There is a once daily pill called PrEP that can help reduce the risk of transmitting HIV. For more information, pick up a copy of our latest edition of the Charger Bulletin News and newsstands now. Finals have officially started, which means that we are around the corner from the end of the semester. If you are unsure about your finals dates or times, visit My Charger, go to Academics and click on the final exam schedule for Spring 2019 and Fall 2018, and scroll to the bottom of the page. For on-campus residents, this is just a reminder that all residence halls will be closed starting December 20th at 10 a.m., and they will reopen on January 22nd at 10 a.m. We now head over to our Charger Sports update. How did our Chargers do this week, Ethan? The first half of the season wrapped up this week as women's basketball returned to the win column while the men's team continues to struggle. The women's basketball team took to the court at Charger Gym on Tuesday and defeated American International 68-59. Four Chargers finished in double figures, including senior Alex Kerr, who finished with 16 points and 6 rebounds, with sophomore Bree Pergola adding 10 points as the Chargers earned one more win and they'll go into the holiday break at 7-4, 3-3 in conference. This is good enough for fourth place in the NE10 Southwest Division. The team returns to action December 29th when they travel to Manhattan to take on Nyack College in a non-conference matchup. Tip-off is set for 1.30 p.m. The men's team fell to Goldie Beacom College at home on Wednesday, 81-69. Junior Elijah Bailey finished with a career-high 29 points as the Chargers dropped their fourth game in a row. They go into the holiday break with a record of 5-4, 3-3 three three in conference, also in fourth place in the Southwest Division. The team will return to the court December 30th when they travel to New Jersey to take on Bloomfield College. Tip-off is set for 2 p.m. That's all for this week and this semester. Best of luck to all our Chargers. Best of luck to everyone on finals. Back to you. Last month, the university's Model United Nations team traveled to China to compete in the International College Model United Nations Conference. I am joined here today by... China Delegate Doug Gordon and Director of the, of the Model UN Program, Chris Haynes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so can you tell us exactly what the conference is? Yeah, I mean, just to, to back it up a little bit, Model United Nations, uh, for those who are not really familiar, is a simulation of the United Nations itself. And so what happens is our student delegates represent a country, and in this case, we represented France and its interests on uh, different committees. And each of those committees at the conference um, addresses one or two major global problems. And so whether that's uh, global warming or um, natural disasters and trying to do those things, our students are there to try to debate and create solutions with other delegates from different uh, countries and universities um, to try to address those issues. And so the conference this time was in Xi'an, China, which is uh, a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, historic city uh, in central China, um, famous for its uh, terracotta warriors mm -hmm. and pagodas. And uh, so it was just a, an awesome cultural setting um, to kind of have this conference uh, there. Um, what was the preparation process for the conference? Okay, so I was a delegate for China, and so what we did is we meet every Thursday for four hours from 6 to 10 in, in Maxi Hall. So we, every week we work on something new. So we work on the skills that you, need to be, that you need to have to be successful in the conference. So the first, so we'll do like stuff like networking, learning how to network so you can meet people strategically. Mm -hmm. It's planning, like planning strategically, being able to walk into the room and realize what, you're going to try, what you are trying to achieve throughout the conference and knowing how you're going to achieve it every step of the way. So you have to be... It's sort of like playing chess where you have mm -hmm. to be two steps ahead of your opponents because you need to know what you're going to do in the end and you need to know how, to, how you're going to shape it to mm -hmm. get there. Another thing we learned is we learned how to public speak. We learned how to critical think. We learned how to research a lot. We, just, we, we have to, and like every week we have a different topic, so like we have to be able to research on the, on the spot and be able to argue our points, which is really, it's a really essential skill because, because you need to be able to 
to all your stuff you're not really well versed in because all the time there's new stuff coming in. So you have to be able to learn about it and then be able to regurgitate what you just learned and tell everyone what your, what your stance is on that. Okay. So it's just basically building all the professional skills you need to be successful in this type of career. Yeah, I mean, talking about the conference itself, mm -hmm. Um, before the students even go, we went to China, students had to uh, come up with this position paper. And this is France's position on the global issues or problems that they're addressing in their committee. And so they work really tireless, tirelessly to research and write and edit. I think they go through five or six different drafts each of this two-page document that explains France's position, say, on how to address global warming. What is the problem? What's been done about it before? And what are we proposing? to do about it moving forward. And so we do that, that gets submitted before the conference even starts. And then, as Doug was talking about, we work on a number of different skill sets. And whether that's public speaking, networking, thinking about things in goal-oriented ways and strategic thinking, um, how to uh, become a leader, how to uh, be a leader in that sense. Um, there are a number of different active learning modules that we will go through throughout the course of the semester mm -hmm. on those Thursdays from 6 to 10. Yeah, it sounds like mm -hmm. a long time, but it yeah. really isn't a long it really time. Flies. Yeah. Uh, it goes by really quickly, and students really do develop quickly, mm -hmm. um, especially those who really embrace the process yeah. of feedback and improvement. Yeah, it's one of the greatest things about the program is that pe this is my se second semester doing mm -hmm. it, but you'll have people who come into the class the first week and they're not they're not really where everyone else is at, but mm -hmm. by the end you see like tremendous personal growth. Like I went through it basically, everyone, everyone who's gone through the program has experienced, has experienced like tremendous growth. So you'll have people who are afraid to, to address a, cl a classroom mm -hmm. and, they, and by the end they're turning into people who can stand up in front of a classroom comfortably, talk about whatever they need to talk about and they just become very successful students and most MUN students have been successful and we have multiple people in Washington DC, we have people working with senators, we have people, we have people in the professional world now who are succeeding and a lot of them can attribute a lot of their success to working with this program and learning all those skills. Wow. Yeah, I mean, a few of our, mm -hmm. our interns, a few, a few of our delegates have gotten, like Doug said, have gotten really high-placed internships and jobs. Um, I was supposed to announce today that mm -hmm. Carissa Wilkinson, who was one of the uh, China delegates, uh, just accepted an internship next semester mm -hmm. with Senator Chris Murphy down in wow. Washington, D.C. And so that's just one example. There are others that are actually uh, interning at the White House next semester as well. Um, not things that I could really talk about in terms mm -hmm. of who that is, but um, it, it really does set you up well moving forward if you want to really kind of move, I mean, uh, become a part of the Washington, D.C. culture, be, uh, you know, take on jobs that really involve a lot of strategic thinking mm -hmm. um, and, and networking and uh, problem solving in that sense. Wow. So what was a typical day for you guys in China? Okay, so we, on like the conference day, so mm -hmm. Actually, before the conference even started, we had two cultural days where we toured Xi'an with like all of the people that were in the Mali One conference. So that was like a really great opportunity to meet people from all around the world. Like, for our, we, they had they organized us in buses. So our bus was us, a team from Germany, and a team from Italy. So it was just really, you really get that international perspective of everyone. You get to talk to these people. You get to sit with them. Yeah. It's like a really, it's really a great opportunity to meet people outside of the country. And then once the conference begins, you. So we, we would have to wake up early, we would have to eat breakfast. And for this conference, it was a short, there was only two days of conference, but like they were very long days. Other conferences, such as like New York, it's very, it's all spread out. This is just two tremendous days. And we would, we would wake up, we would go down to the committee room, it would be four hour session, then you'd get lunch with people in your committee. And it, was, it would usually be fun. Like for example, I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken with a bunch of Italians <laughs> on Thanksgiving, because we were, we were away. Yeah. And don't get everyone to think that you <laughs> took you to Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, no, that they was also had fried scorpions too. Oh yeah, so <laughs> no. they had fried scorpions. They were, we went to a market where there's tons of different types of food, like fr fried like spiders and stuff. That was very like it wasn't it wasn't for me. The fried <laughs> we did not eat the fried. No, spiders. we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. So is there anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I mean. Um, well, at its core, MUN is really about um, you know developing students, and that's personally and that's professionally. Mm -hmm. And one thing we really didn't mention today is the amount of tremendous growth and confidence that a lot of students experience while through the program itself. 
Um, if there's one thing that anyone can take away is MUN is really a big confidence builder and booster in that sense. Uh, students that um, you know really have big dreams but don't know how to get there or don't think they can get there, um, that belief can be built throughout the process of Model United Nations, and that comes from experiencing, you know, both doing well and failure in that. You know, mm -hmm. trying to pick yourself, you know, off the floor and and do it again and become successful and solve that problem. Um, moving forward, you can really draw on that those experiences, um, and uh, you know, can convince yourself that you know there is nothing that is impossible that they can't do. And mm -hmm. and a lot of so you, on the on the back end after conference is over, you absolutely realize. Uh, how different a lot of these students are and their family members and their other professors and their friends will always remark you know mm -hmm. sometimes they don't realize it themselves um, how different they are and uh, how much of a positive kind of change it makes. Mm -hmm. I would also like to say like the entire the entire Mali United Nations program is just amazing for just getting you out there and just getting you mm -hmm. getting you started so like we'll meet so like we didn't meet with them but in Washington DC they meet with like top like lobbyists top like a lot of po politicians, they meet with like all these people who are really in charge of doing stuff, and those are contacts that you can use going prof going forward professionally. Mm -hmm. And being involved in the program means you get involved with the whole political science department, and that's just they have so many great speakers all the time, great people. If you just and with Mali United Nations, you get the confidence to go up and talk to them, and you know how to you know how to talk to them and be in a professional manner. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just a, it's just a great opportunity for people, and it's it's one that everyone should take advantage of if they can. Well, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very thank much you. for having us. Thanks for joining us in our final episode of the semester, and for tuning in week after week. For our latest up-to-date campus news and all of our episodes this semester, visit chargerbulletin.com. And don't forget to check out our holiday edition of The Charge Up on chargerbulletin.com. I'm Nicole Rivera. I'm Kaylee Feschler. And I'm Ethan Cardona. We'll see you in 2019.